Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking on the new plastic Serastus Knight Lancer kit that Games Workshop sent through to us for review. I've already painted up some little Knight Lancers for the channel. Uh, I did them in House Caesarean, uh, which is the uh, Knight household attached to Krytos, which is the Titanicus uh, stuff that I've done over here and over on Patreon. But as I said there, they were to do with the Titanicus stuff, so they were teeny tiny. So this was a really nice chance to paint a much bigger model. So rather than just paint them in the same scheme, um, I had a look around and I thought, what's a cool one to do? And House Malanax has always stood out since we first saw it in one of the Heresy Black books, as sort of one of the, the sort of more eye-catching headline baddie uh, night households of the Horus Heresy. They've also got a bunch of colours on them that I really enjoy painting. So the nice thing here was I was able to do a project for the channel, but I could also do a little bit of something for me within it. And rather than take weeks and weeks to do a sort of display level version of the night, I wanted to pick a couple of things to focus on and really nail, but also just try things out a little bit differently, go outside of what I would normally do to paint and see if I discover anything that I can write down in my little personal painting journal to take into future projects. This is quite a long video, but I really hope you enjoy it. Let's paint. So as you'll have seen, the sprues have sort of filled to the brim. Um, it's a very, very easy sub-assemblies, uh, and there's a nice little uh, transfer sheet in there as well. But I wanted to do just a little bit of reposing with the knight. Now, a lot of the these large sort of mech robot type kits that Games Workshop do, um, they're very cleverly designed where they'll have little tabs in them so you can build a sort of stock pose, really solid, really easy to locate. Or you can just snip the little tabs off and that gives you a lot more freedom um, when it comes to posability. Generally, the two things you want to watch out for if you're going to clip these tabs off is clearance, um, if you're going to be putting panels over them, uh, and also if you've got things like pistons, if you really extend uh, certain limbs, um, sometimes you'll find that the piston that comes on the kit is going to be too short for that, uh, and you'll either need to lengthen it uh, with a piece of you know plastic rod or brass rod or whatever. Um, but uh, for this, I was just going to do a, a really simple repose with sort of one leg up. I don't generally like my knights and titans sort of ninja kicking around and all that. I like them to try and look sort of heavy. Um, for the basing, I'd got this um, reaver head pit basing piece from the, I think it was the Lord Solar, whatever the, the recent Imperial Guard boss on Robot Horse uh, miniature was. I think it's I think it's the new Lord Solar, Leonatus, that's what it's called. Um, not a huge fan of the model, if I'm honest, but the base I think is incredible because it's, well, it's a plastic reaver head. Um, I wish it had been a loyal uh, Loyalist Titan head. I'd have had a bit more fun uh, with painting it for that, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but I thought what a great piece um, for him to have his foot on the night. Um, only shame is that to the most sensible place to put the feet meant that the Titan head was facing backwards. But I guess it means I get to look at it when I'm gaming, right? Um, even if he's not there um, when you're looking at the model from the front. As well as changing the, the knee and the ankle joints, um, one thing I needed to sort out as well was just to nip the little tabs off the hips as well. Um, and when you're doing this sort of one leg up type pose, it's, it's really not difficult to do, but I've found, and I've built quite a lot of Titanicus Titans, which is sort of why I'm talking about it, um, is that if you have the other leg fairly straight, foot flat on the floor, which is basically pretty stock, you're able to have a lot more freedom with this other leg. You'll have much greater stability, um, and I think the poses end up looking a little bit better as well. So again, I nipped off the tab uh, on the toe piece. Uh, I've built the other foot just completely stock, but nipped off the tab on the toe piece for this put it roughly where I want it to be um, and now I can secure this uh, in place. So I put it where I want it and then I've used extra thin uh, plastic glue, uh, this is by Tamiya, and I'm just sort of basically pin washing this in. So I'm using capillary action where it sucks the glue off the end of the little brush into the gap and it will then melt the two pieces of plastic together. Uh, it's a very effective way of gluing your pieces together um, if they're if using your, your typical thick glue might sort of splooge out everywhere and, and make a bit of a mess. Um, it's a really sort of nice way of doing it. And also it means that you don't have to have the two pieces separate and then push them together. You can have the pieces together and then use the fact that the glue can pin wash in. Is it as firm a bond as when you've got the two pieces and you smush them together? No, but it's, it's pretty good. 
Now, one of the big focuses I wanted with this miniature to get right, other than the main colour, was the skeleton on the knight. And I love seeing these old industrial and military machines, agricultural machines, particularly growing up, where it was just all oily black sort of metal. Um, I'm, I don't like super shiny metal even when it's like a brighter silver that's been washed down and stuff i just don't particularly care for it when i see it on knights and titans and stuff like that so i thought right great chance to have a go at, at really nailing this um and something i can use on future projects and the good news is because i think i really did um so i've sprayed the skeleton uh, black primer and then i've taken uh one of the vallejo metal color series metals uh, this i think was exhaust manifold uh, and then i've added in some black contrast paint i think it was black legion just to darken it down that little bit further um, so i want it metallic but i want it really really dark um, and greasy um, and just yeah you know what i'm getting at and i wanted to get some texture in there so rather than airbrush this all on um, i stippled it on using uh, a very large dry brush here and it didn't take too long um you know it's longer than airbrushing it but you don't get the texture using the airbrush um, whereas I really really like the texture I got from stippling it and sort of smushing it on uh, with this dry brush so you can see it once it's done so we're still getting that shine of the metallic which is great but it's already much much more dull and dark and yeah I know it's one color but I was feeling pretty positive about how the skeleton was going to look so I wanted to add a little bit more interest uh, into this metal now. So first off, I've taken uh, a red contrast paint. This is Flesh Terror's red. I've thinned it, I don't know, maybe 50-50 with airbrush thinner. Uh, and I'm just gonna blast this on in various different spots all over the miniature, completely random um, placement wise, other than the fact that probably generally I'm aiming into the shadowed areas rather than uh, the areas that are light. And I don't want it to go red as if I was doing like a, a clear coat over a metallic. But I just want to start introducing a bit of colour and a bit of interest and a bit of life uh, into this metal. You can already see as the light catches it, it's getting a bit more interesting. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with a green. We know that red and green work together well. I've probably done slightly less green, maybe two thirds as much as I've done of the red. And then for a few of the pipes, I'm going to paint them a little bit different. I want to leave the vast majority of the pipes the same colour as the rest of the, the skeleton, because again, when it's all covered in grease, when it's just been a piece of machinery that's been maintained by slapping the grease on, it's done. Everything ends up just looking the same. Um, but I wanted to do just a handful of the pipes slightly different. So I've chosen Corvus Black here, which is sort of very, very dark turquoise color, uh, but quite boring. And then I'm going to do Corn Red as well, which is also very boring. I've said Corn Red. I'm looking at this video again. I think it might have been Mephiston Red, but it doesn't matter, right? Just a boring red um, on just a handful of the pipes. Now, absolutely go wild, paint the pipes whatever colors you want, do the cool black and white hazard thing. It all looks awesome. But this is an army painting video. I want to get this pumped out and on the table as soon as I can, but still looking cool. So that was an area I could save a bit of time. And then on the pistons, which is only about 10 of across the whole model, maybe 10, 12, just a really, really bright silver color. And then the whole thing is getting a couple of coats of polyurethane gloss varnish through the airbrush. And this is thinned, maybe two drops of thinner to one drop of varnish, because my varnish is very, very thick. And I'm spraying it at about 25 to 30 psi in a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle airbrush it's our harder and steenbeck signature series infinity and the reason i've sprayed the gloss on here is not to protect the paintwork but because this product that i'm going to put over the top of that metal i want to be able to wipe off quite easily and by putting it over a glossier surface it means i won't have to press as hard on the model to remove the paint so in that little dish there i've just got some mineral spirits and you can see I've shook up my pot of winter streak and grime. Now I've chosen winter streak and grime here because it's green. Um, so again, I want to bring that, that green in uh, where I can, because I know it's going to work really nicely against the bone color. Um, and if I introduce any sort of red later into the model, it will work nicely for that as well. I'm just going to work my way around the whole skeleton now and just 
slop this on basically not slop but also don't be shy you know get it on there just wanted to say a massive thank you to those of you that support us over on patreon um that support enables myself and Andy to produce videos on here each week and over on there each week. We can do projects for army painting, we can do speed painting, but we can also take our time, particularly over on Patreon, and do three, four, five part series uh, on display level miniatures or certain techniques. Uh, at the minute, Andy's working on this awesome uh, Farsight model. He's just finished, I think, like a 45 minute video or so to do with uh, how he's done the red on it. Um, so if you fancy that sort of level of in-depth video, consider checking out the Patreon. And if it wasn't for you guys supporting us there, we simply couldn't do this. So a huge, huge thank you. Um, likes and subscribes are really helpful on here as well. So thanks for doing that too. Now I've left this to dry, I don't know, half an hour, an hour maybe. I think I walked the dog, so probably about an hour. Um, and now I've got a really soft makeup sponge, just bought a bag of these um, from the pound shop. Again, some mineral spirits in there. Dunk the sponge in the mineral spirits and then just start dabbing at the model, wiping away some of that, what I'm choosing to represent as sort of grease and grime. Just take some of that away. And as long as you're not pushing too hard on the miniature, there's not going to be any risk of removing any paint here at all. But regardless of what we were using, if you push too hard, you're going to you're going to take paint off the miniature. It's nothing to do with the mineral spirits or the varnish protection. It's like it's the abrasion, it's the force of you actually handling the model that's going to be removing the paint here if you do. And then once it was all dry, I wanted to give the model a coat of satin varnish because I wanted it to have that slight sheen still. And I'm really, really pleased um, with how this has come out. Um, this is how I'll be doing skeletons on my knights and titans and things from, from now on. Well, until I change my mind of what I like and then I'll probably be doing something different again. For the armor panels, now a handful of them uh, are red in some of the artwork. It's a really, really great sort of secondary or tertiary color um, to go with the scheme. But I want to keep them nice and simple. Um, so I've gone for a pre-shade here using white over black and I'm just using Tamiya XF2, which is the Tamiya acrylic range. I've used Tamiya thinner with it, which you need to because it's a solvent base. Um, I've probably thinned it three to four drops of thinner for every drop of paint. And again, I'm spraying it 25, 30 PSI, 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle. I use my airbrush, that airbrush for everything that I do. Really nice and simple, build up the layers. So we go black through dark gray through white. And then for the red, I was gonna use Flesh Terra's red contrast. So again, when I'm army painting, I try to use uh, a limited number of paints because I think it's a bit more efficient when you've got them out. It also can help bring a bit of harmony to the model as well. So thinned about 50-50 with normal airbrush thinner, sprayed them over, loved how it looked here. But when it dried, obviously it went a lot more matte and I wasn't quite sure that was as exciting as I wanted it to be. Um, so rather than gloss it up using gloss varnish, um, I was going to use Tamiya Clear Red later on in this scheme, and, and you'll see where. So I had it on the desk and I thought, oh, well, this is a glossy red paint. Let's just give it a couple of coats of that. So again, being Tamiya, I've used Tamiya X20A Thinner. I just gave it a couple of thin coats and you can see how much deeper and richer it's made that red look. So I was really happy with that. For the parts of the model that are like the shield generators um, and any bits that I want to look really techy, I'm just going to go for a super old um, bronzy color on the model. I'm not a fan of um, OSL or object source lighting or necessarily of many effects, um, sort of gimmicky effects. They're just, they're just not my cup of tea. If you like them, great, go for it, do it. Um, but it's just not my, not the way I enjoy sort of seeing, seeing my models. So to create this sort of grunged, old aged um, bronzy color, you can see I've used decayed metal, then I've done a heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade with just a dot of Pterodon Turquoise in it. Again, once that's dry, I'm now doing a heavy wash, and this time an oil wash using Sepia from Absalom 502. I'm going to be using that oil a lot throughout the video. And then once that's dry, I'm using, again, a heavy wash of Absalom 502 oil again. This is called Turquoise Lights. 
really really heavy washes i don't mind if it's pooling i don't mind whatever because it's going to end up looking a bit like verdigris which is exactly what i'm after and then to lighten it up a little bit i've used a thrash metal by scale 75. Um, you could use something like rune or brass would work well um, this is a little bit lighter than that um, but i saw it in the box and i thought oh, i haven't used this in ages let's give this a whirl and we're just dry brushing that over it's really really nice and simple but very effective which again is i think the key when it comes to army painting now for the main color so other than the skeleton this is what i wanted to nail and i've seen various takes on it um and none of which have have really resonated with me of exactly how i see it especially when i look at the artwork um, so i'm going to start off with tamiya flat earth all over a black prime you know by all means rattle can this on if you don't have an airbrush rattle can this on and you're not really going to use an airbrush for the entire rest of the model so it's not an essential part of painting this miniature i've used flat earth over the black in layers to build up so a little bit darker where i want it to be in the shadows and now i'm going to use wooden deck tan which is a slightly more yellow uh, slightly warmer deck tan um, color by tamiya And again, thinned, similar to the flat earth, thinned maybe three to four drops of thinner to paint. Now to bring in the color on the armor, that, that signature, I think, sort of slightly yellow tint, I'm going to do a bit of oil dot filtering, uh, which if you've watched many of the videos on here, you'll know I'm a massive fan of. And miniatures of this size, um, tanks, things like that, this is where this thing apps really, really shines. So we're going to use the undiluted oil and we're going to be placing little dots of it, hence oil dot filtering over the miniature and it's going to change the paintwork underneath it's going to change the color quite subtly underneath it now as long as that paint is dry underneath nothing wrong is going to happen nothing bad's going to happen just let it dry we don't need to varnish over the top of it i've used the yellow color there so the ochre and then the buff and that slightly lighter color as well and what this will do is bring in lots of variation across the panel itself it's a relatively simple technique this um don't be nervous about it because it's really hard to mess it up. You just might not get it looking quite how you want the first time. And that doesn't matter because it's really easy just to wipe it off and start again. So I'm going to take a soft wedge shaped brush here, put it in some mineral spirits. Now we don't want them flooding the surface, right? We just want our brush ever so slightly damp with those mineral spirits. So as we touch it, you see it moves the paint, but it's not turning it into a wash and then making it run into all the recesses. We want it to stay on the flat surface. And it means we're going to have to reapply that mineral spirit quite often to our brush. And that's absolutely fine. We just off on a piece of tissue paper, take the majority of it off, a couple of wipes across the surface, and we're good to go again. And this is going to change depending on the oils you use. Uh, and also little things like how hot it is where you're painting, you know, the things are going to dry quicker as well. And you see that I'm moving the panel um, through 180 degrees. So that I'm always pulling the uh, streaks, as it were, in the same direction or the same orientation top to bottom but i like turning it around like that because i think you get a slightly nicer effect than always just dragging it top to bottom and this is this is where we want to get with it so we can hardly see it now as it's wet but when that dries that's just ever so slightly going to subtly filter that surface uh, and give us a lovely lovely sort of worn armor effect now this is probably the most different thing I'm going to show here and this is this is a technique I used to use when I painted a lot of tanks for myself um, but since we started the channel I don't do a massive amount of personal hobby so I haven't actually been doing this uh, for quite a while so this was uh, simply because I, I haven't painted many large miniatures for a while um, so this is a really great opportunity to get out and paint exactly how I like to paint um, I had a lot of fun doing the main color on this night it was really really enjoyable um, so I've taken neat uh, so undiluted sepia oil here and I've just applied it into some of the recesses uh, where I want to add a little bit of shadow um, and, and grime uh, into the armor then I'm going to take a soft brush similar to how we did with the oil dot filtering so not too much of the mineral spirits off it and I'm just going to tap at the surface and slightly feather this oil out onto the surrounding area again I don't want to turn it into a wash but I do need a little bit of that mineral spirit on the brush to be able to manipulate the oil. Now, one of the reasons I like using these Absalom 502 oils is that they do dry relatively quickly. And so I've left that for maybe 
three to five minutes, something like that. Basically, I left it as long as it took me to put the paint on the other chest panel. And now I'm taking a very, very soft brush, practically dry. And I'm just going to start sort of buffing and feathering it out further onto the panels. And essentially what we're doing here is bringing in a ton of shadow, which we could do with the airbrush if we wanted, or we could do with lots of glazes as well. But by using the oils, it's quite a simple way of getting really, really nice, subtle variation onto the armor. And also using this color, it helps us just grime the armor up. Now, one of the things I'm not gonna do on this, I said I wanted to try something different. So I'm not gonna do tons of chipping and throw loads of streaks at it. I'm a little bit bored of that at the minute, just because I've done it a lot and I, I see it everywhere. But also, I feel that when you don't have loads of time to do those techniques, I think if you rush them, I don't care for how that looks. I feel like it looks rushed. So I would rather figure out other ways of getting the night painted efficiently and still looking cool um, without sort of skimping on the stages. Um, it's something we talk about quite a lot um, with our army painting. It's trying to find that that balance that, that you like. And ultimately, that's what it's about, right? What do you like? If you love the chuck a bit of streak and grind, bang a brush down a panel, wonderful. If you like that look, get it done. It's certainly a very uh, efficient way, a quick way of painting the miniature. Um, if you don't necessarily like that, but you do want it to look a bit grungy and grimy, well, these are some other ways we can look um, at achieving that. And you can just do both. If you've got the time, it will look great. Um, but I think, you know, something me and Andy talk, talk about a lot is you paint how you want to paint, paint how you like the results. Don't paint how you're told you should do whether it's on a YouTube tutorial or whether it's a, an Instagram account and it's, it's a popular thing at the time, just there is no right or wrong way of doing it. Um, so, so don't feel sort of pigeonholed uh, into having to do certain certain techniques. I know I have felt that way, you know, in, in, in the past, um, starting out. Um, so it's nice to sort of, it's nice when you, you start to get to that phase where you, you know what you like. Now this panel, has had a little bit longer to dry and you're going to see I'm able to manipulate this much much quicker um, and sort of buff it out much much quicker. You noticed on that previous panel whilst I was soapboxing um, that where it was still relatively wet um, I wasn't able to buff it out as easily so I would suggest probably you do all your armor panels on the night and then go back to the first one and start doing this this buffing out stage by then I, th I reckon it'll be absolutely perfect. But I tell you what, I have smashed through some audio books doing this night. It's been brilliant. It's a very relaxing way of painting because it's basically the same thing just over and over again on this thing. Um, it's quite a simple model, really. Here's just a little bit more. I've gone a little bit heavier here on the shoulder pad. And you see as I come out into the center of the panel, I'm conscious of where my brush strokes going. So I'm actually, whilst I'm buffing, I'm also pulling it down slightly. And we get that bit of a streak effect as well. If we take a look at uh, a panel I haven't done it to yet, so all that panel's had is just a quick pin wash on it of the sepia, compared to this one that's had the pin wash and a full sort of grimy buffing, for want of a better term. But I love it. I, I, I think, you know, I couldn't be happier with how this main armour colour um, and effect is, is coming out. For the trim, I really wasn't sure what I was going to do until I actually got to it. I had a few various different ideas, um, like a black metal, you know, heavily weather, blah, blah, blah. And then actually, once I had the pieces together, once I had the skeleton done, once I had the main armor color done, I looked at it and thought, you know what, just a simple matte black trim might look really, really nice. Um, so let's give it a go. Uh, and as it turned out, it did, I think, was, was quite effective. I didn't really feel I didn't need to do an awful lot more to it. However, at this stage, we had quite a lot of different finishes to the model. Uh, so I wanted to unify that a bit and I've sprayed over here uh, Ammo by MIG Lucky Matte Varnish. So it's got a different finish to the uh, skeleton underneath. I didn't go ultra matte with this because I find ultra matte can often kill um, quite a lot of the, the, the transition work you've done with the colors. Um, but matte just, 
just takes the edge off and, and just sort of unifies everything. So then to add a little bit more life to the black, I've just given it a sepia wash. So I think it's important if you're going to use dirt color that that, that dirt color is present across the model. You know, the dirt would be the same color on the black as it is on the tan. Um, you know, we don't need to change that. And I know I said I wasn't going to do any chipping. I had to do a tiny bit just because I like it. Um, really, really restrained. Um, and it was also a good way to cover up any areas where I'd accidentally got some of the black uh, onto the main armor color. I've just taken a color here, Panzer Ace's Dark Rust, one of my absolute favorite browns. Um, but you could use something like Rhinox Hide, be, be absolutely fine. Um, do you know what? If, if, if I'd used Rhinox Hide and I'd forgotten, I'd look back at this and assume it was Rhinox Hide. It's just habit, right? I just really like this paint. So I keep using it, um, but they're very, very similar. Um, so you can see there I had a little scratch on the on the main armor panel. So by using this dark rust, I can make that look more deliberate rather than just what it was, which was a, a bit of carelessness or a bit of an accident, whatever. But I have to stop myself here because normally I would be going all over these panels, doing loads of chipping and stuff using this. For the exhausts, just to bring a little bit of something different in, uh, another additional color, um, I thought I'd do them uh, I, I love doing exhaust this way, just sort of old rusty metals, exactly what the exhausts end up looking like on my van. Um, I've just taken a dark brown, so Rhinox Hide. Again, I'm going to stipple it on um, for a bit of additional texture. Then I'm going to take more Frank Brown, so a more a lighter and more orange brown, and I'm going to sponge that over. Again, here we're just representing rusted steel. So not too much on the sponge there, so I'm gently pressing and just enough's coming off to mark the model, but I'm not getting big splodges and I'm not having to push too hard. And then finally, just a little oil wash using a colour called Light Rust. So you can see you could use something like Burnt Sienna would work very well here. Um, that's a, a colour you'll commonly find with oils. Just going to wash that into a few of the recesses. Super simple um, and much like nearly everything else we're doing on here we could take it way further but for, for three stages I think it's very very effective. Now, I wanted to add again a little bit more interest uh, into the skeleton here so on the pistons I'm using a really glossy enamel wash it's called fresh engine oil and I'm just drawing this up and down the pistons trying to get it to collect predominantly uh, down near the ends of them um, and what you'll do there is you'll end up creating this lovely sort of ring around it where all that grease uh, where it looks like all that grease is collected um, and that's sort of how far the piston will go up uh, most of the times. I didn't think I was going to do any chipping and edge highlighting on the armor um, but actually when I got to this stage I thought you know what, it wouldn't hurt and there's not that many edges to be fair because a lot of the panels are just a flat so I've used uh, Games Workshop Wraithbone here, so a much, much lighter colour. And I'm just doing those little tippy taps along the edges. So it's acting like the edge highlight, but it's also just making it look like there's a little bit of battle damage on there as well. You can see on the head there as well, it's quite effective. Now for the eyes, I wanted to do one of my absolute favourite ways of painting sort of lenses and lights and things. Um, we're going to take a really, really bright silver and just paint the lens in. I've used the Leo Model Air Steel here, but you know if you've got a colour called Chrome, that'll be brilliant for it. Um, steel's this version of steel, anyways, is really really bright anyway. And then I'm going to take that Tamiya Clear Red that I mentioned earlier, and I'm just going to brush paint this over. Generally, I would never brush paint with Tamiya paints, um, but the clears work brilliantly um, for this application. Once that was dry, I gave it one more coat just to add a little bit of depth to it, but that was it done. And I, I just love how it looks on models, particularly at this sort of size. Um, and it's nice and quick. Now for his, is it an ion? I think it's an ion shield, isn't it? I wanted that metal to be just a little bit different um, to the skeleton, um, you know, because it wasn't just going to get greased up and left where it was. You know, I, I picture this being um, having to be maintained um, in a different way. Um, so I've used a dark silver, uh, used gunmetal grey, and then I've sponged over a lighter silver. This is dark aluminium. doesn't matter, just a dark silver and a light silver. 
sponge this over to give again texture and to highlight it. And then once I was happy with that, where it's at, let it dry and then a wash using that sepia again, that sepia oil. So we've used this sepia oil wash over, I think the vast majority of the model. Um, I really like it at the moment. I guess it's kind of like my oil version of Agrax. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you know how everyone gets little go-tos. This is, that's fast becoming mine. I also wanted to just do a little something different with his little crotch flag. So rather than have the flag bit, um, I've just put some links of the uh, jeweler chain on there um, and then again just paint that silver. If you want to make them solid you can just run thin super glue down them and they will you know stay in position. It doesn't bother me that they jangle around so I just left them like that. And now we're at the sort of finishing touches stage. So I've got the fresh engine oil, I've got some engine grease as an oil um, and uh, dark rust that you see there. I'm just going to go around the model and just dot it in here and there on the skeleton or maybe on the trim just where I want a little flash of colour or for instance on this moving part of this shot glance I wanted that to look really greasy um, you know because it's constantly in use backwards and forwards um, so that's where I washed over the the engine grease oil paint there um, just to give it a little bit of something else. Um, and here he is, the base I've painted up just the same as I do on nearly all our YouTube videos, so I'll, I'll link that up there so, um, so you can see how I do it. But um, yeah, I mean, let's take a look at him. Did we achieve the objectives, the objectives that I had when I set out? Well, I wanted to nail the armor color, and I really feel like I did. For me, this is the nicest version of the House Malanax color that I've seen, so I hope that doesn't sound arrogant, but that's that's just a very rewarding thing to do. It means I've achieved what I wanted to do with that. The skeleton, again, I wanted to create that greasy, grimy, really in heavily industrial agricultural sort of looking machinery look to it. But again, I'm really happy with how that's come out. I think I've achieved what I wanted to um, with that. Also, getting it done in a timely fashion. As I said, I would love to have spent weeks and weeks on this. Um, I didn't have that option. I had a you know a week at most to get it done um, and therefore I had to decide what where could I be more efficient what could I do to get it done in that time and that was sort of it means we've kind of ended up with this I think a kind of grimy more heavy metal looking style and by heavy metal I don't by any means mean I think it looks like an heavy metal paint job but a slightly cleaner slightly crisper style than I typically would do but I do think it's very, very effective. We're able to identify the parts of the model really easily when we glance at it. It looks absolutely fab sat over on the desk from me there, which is exactly how I'm going to view it when it's on the table. And it means that I can get it done fairly quickly. Now, if I had much longer, would I do a load more chipping on it? Would I maybe do some streaks and stuff on it? Perhaps I would. But the nice part about what we've done with this scheme is nearly everything we've done on it, bar perhaps the main armor color, we could add more to it if we wanted. We could go in and do more oils on the skeleton. We could maybe do a bit of chipping on the skeleton if we wanted. On the trim itself, we could go in and perhaps add a lot more grime into there if we wanted. I know the traditional scheme um, perhaps has a little bit more sort of green grime and stuff in the in the trim. Again, I liked the, the contrast that that quite simple matte black gave me on it. Um, you know, on the, the, the lenses we could take further. We could do a lot more work with transfers. Um, the transfer sheet is really nice designs. And it's really nicely printed. Um, mine was quite thick, the film. Um, so it, to get them working how I wanted took a lot more work um, than I had anticipated. And therefore I've used fewer transfers on it than perhaps I typically would. But I said to myself, right, you've got an hour to get the decals on. Once I hit that hour point and it was clear I wasn't going to get everything I wanted done, I had to change my approach on it again just with that army painting mindset um, to have because otherwise you know it just doesn't get done and it just becomes a, a great looking shelf queen and if that's the goal great and I'd genuinely be interested to know in the comments if you'd like to see a video over here on on YouTube that is two or three you know weeks worth just painting the one model say like this night but we paint it to the you know the nth degree um, let me know if you're interested in that or actually we'll just save that um, for our Patreon stuff. So yeah, a kind of clean but dirty, um, you know, army painting scheme uh, in the end. And I think what matters is when I look at it, I'm happy. 
I really like how it's come out. Will I revisit it? Maybe. Alongside this knight, I had a little practice model to, to check things on, and that was a Questorus knight, so he's quite a long way along as well. And then we've got the Castigator coming, haven't we, and the Acheron, so maybe I might be going back and, and just doing a little bit more tweaking and fettling on this guy along with his uh, along with his chums but thanks ever so much for sticking with me I know this has been a really long video compared to normal but do you know what it took me a really flipping long time to paint it because <laughs> it's a big old model um, hence why it's a few days later uh, coming out than I'd liked it to have been as well but do let me know if you've got any questions about anything I've done pop them back down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can thanks ever so much for your support and I'll see you next time if you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.